Hello, my name is Jason and I'm a midwife from the Grilling Ward at St George's Hospital. We hope you've enjoyed your stay here with us and I'm going to give you some information to prepare you for going home with your baby. In the discharge pack there are a number of leaflets so please do have it to hand. If you look at the front of your discharge pack you should find the contact details for your community midwife. The community midwife should make contact with you within 24 to 48 hours. This may be in the form of a phone call or a visit. If you do not hear anything, you should contact your community midwife and phone the number on the front of your discharge pack. The health visitor will take over your care once you have been discharged by your community midwife. They will call you to make an appointment. This usually happens when your baby is about two weeks old. Please don't forget to make an appointment with your GP. That should be at six weeks for your postnatal checkup and eight weeks for your first baby check. If you have any questions or queries, please contact the Carmen Suite or Gwilym Ward. For medical assistance, please contact your GP. And for emergencies, please go to A&E. Now let's look into your discharge pack. Here you should find your purple notes two copies of your labour summary, one for your community midwife and one for your health visitor. You will also find important information leaflets and the infant feeding pack. You should also have received your child's health record book and your birth notification from your midwife. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague Olivia who will give you more information about the leaflets contained in your discharge pack. Hello, my name is Olivia. I will be giving you more detailed information on the leaflets in your discharge pack. It is a legal requirement for your baby's birth to be registered within 42 days. As your baby was born at St George's Hospital, you will need to register at Wandsworth Town Hall. They offer a drop-in service, or if you like, appointments can be made over the phone. Please look at the leaflet with contact details and opening hours. Hello, is this Wandsworth Registry Office? Hello there, can I please make an appointment to register my baby's birth? Don't forget to take your birth notification with you. The safest place for your baby to sleep is in the room with you, in a cot, lying on their back. The cot should be next to you for the first six months. Remember, don't have the room too hot. Ideally, it should be between 16 to 20 degrees. Smoking also increases the risk of cot death. To reduce the risk of cot death, make sure your baby is lying on its back to sleep on a firm and flat mattress. Place your baby feet to foot in the crib and make sure that your baby is not overdressed or covered with too much bedding. Breastfeeding reduces the risk of cot death. Hello, my name's Selena and I'm a physiotherapist based here at St George's Hospital. In your discharge pack, you will be receiving this leaflet, Fit for the Future. Whether you have given birth vaginally or by caesarean section, you will find very important information on effective and safe exercises as well as practical advice. Regular pelvic floor muscle exercises will aid with the healing of perineal tears reduce stress urinary incontinence and improve sexual experience. In order to squeeze your pelvic floor muscles, there are various ways or analogies you can try. For example, you could imagine that you have a kite shape tissue in your pelvis with each corner of that kite tied to different structures, your pubic bone at the front, your tailbone at the back and your sitting bones at the side. Now imagine that you are simply lifting the tissue up towards your head and then releasing. There are two different exercises you should perform, both quick squeezes and slow holds. The slow holds involve squeezing the pelvic floor muscle and holding it. Aim for 10 seconds, but if you get tired before then, then release. You should practice doing this and over time you will build endurance. Try repeating this 10 times.
My name is Sarah Kipps. I work for reproductive sexual health in the community of Wandsworth. It's important for you to know that when you've had your baby, you can get pregnant as early as three weeks after the birth. You do not need to have a period to become pregnant again. There are various methods of contraception available to you. For example, condoms, diaphragms, intrauterine devices, injections, implants and pills. Please contact your reproductive sexual health clinic in your local area or your GP for further information and support. It's important to know that the combined pill is not recommended for breastfeeding mothers. Breastfeeding can be a useful contraceptive method if it is frequent, exclusive and at night. It's a useful way of spacing children. Hello, I'm Polly Hughes. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynaecologist here at St George's Hospital. I'm here to talk to you about cervical screening. If you are over 25 years old, you should be offered cervical screening. This involves having a smear test. A cervical smear test can pick up abnormal cells that may turn into cervical cancer. It has been shown that early treatment and early detection can actually lead to a reduction by 75% of cervical cancer. If it has been more than three years since you've had a cervical smear, then you should have one done about three months after you've had your baby. Your cervical smear can be done at your GP surgery, by your practice nurse or at a family planning clinic. Hello, my name is Alexandria and I'm one of the midwives at St George's Hospital. This booklet gives you information about breastfeeding, for example, good positioning and attachment and the storage of breast milk and hand expressing. You can also find some top tips such as, it is recommended that you feed your baby only your breast milk and do not give any other food or drink. The more mum's milk you give your baby, the more milk you will produce. Giving any other food or drink will reduce your milk supply. Additionally, if you give your baby less milk, it will not protect your baby against illnesses as effectively. We also advise not to feed any solid food to your baby before they are ready, at around six months. This could lead him or her getting a stomach upset. We also recommend that you don't give your baby a dummy before breastfeeding is established. Babies using a dummy can sometimes find it difficult to remember how to attach to the breast. They also feed less and therefore won't get as much milk. In your next leaflet, you will find information about breastfeeding support and resources in your local area. Here you find useful telephone numbers of our infant feeding team and breastfeeding clinics. Also, you will find contact details of the breastfeeding network, the breastfeeding helpline and important websites, for example, from UNICEF and Baby Friendly. This leaflet is about caring for your baby at night. In here you will find information on how to feed your baby in the night time and tips on what to do when your baby doesn't settle. If your baby does not settle, place your baby in a skin-to-skin -skin contact and provide comfort through gentle rocking. If you are breastfeeding, you can offer your breast again even if your baby has just had a feed. Babies find suckling very comforting and there is no risk of overfeeding a breastfed baby. If you had a particularly disturbed night, it is especially important to take time to rest during the daytime. However, should your baby cry for long periods, he or she may be ill and need a medical check. This leaflet provides you with information on putting your baby to sleep and bed sharing. Please look at the warning box for more information. Do not sleep with your baby when you have been drinking any alcohol or taking drugs that may cause drowsiness. Do not sleep with your baby if you or anyone else is a smoker within the home. And do not put yourself in a situation where you could doze off with your baby on a sofa or armchair. If your baby is hungry, he or she will show you signs of wanting to feed. Your baby may suck his hands, root, or may even just be restless in the cot, which is a sign that he wants to feed. 
Breastfeeding is flexible. You can feed your baby when he or she is hungry or if they need comfort and also if your breast is full. This is called responsive feeding. To remember how to correctly position your baby, you can use chins. C. Your baby should be close. H. His head should be free to tilt back. I. Your baby's head and body in a straight line. N. His nose across your nipple. And S. A sustainable position. So now we're going to discuss how to correctly attach your baby to the breast. Firstly, bring your baby close with his nose to your nipple. Let your baby's head tip back so that his top lip can brush against your nipple. This should make him open his mouth really wide. When your baby's mouth opens wide, bring him quickly to the breast with his head back and his chin leading. Your baby can then take a large amount of breast in his mouth and not just the nipple. Your nipple will go all the way to the back of the soft part of his mouth and you will not get sore. You will know that your baby is well attached if his chin is indenting your breast, your baby's mouth is wide open and his lower lip is turned back, your baby's cheeks stay full and rounded during sucking, your baby is sucking with a steady rhythm with pauses, if you can see the dark skin around your nipple, which is called the areola, there should be more above your baby's top lip than below your baby's bottom lip. And finally, breastfeeding should always be comfortable and pain-free. My name is Katja Dukowski. I'm a midwife and I'm part of the infant feeding team here at St. George's Hospital. I would like to give you some information on hand expressing. Well, in many situations, hand expressing is a very useful tool for all breastfeeding mothers. For example, a mother can hand express if her breasts are engorged or if she's separated from her baby. Her baby might be in the neonatal unit and not able to breastfeed, but then she can hand express and provide for her baby in that way. In order to stimulate the oxytocin reflex, have your baby near you, or you can also look at a picture of your baby. Then start massaging your breasts. Cup your breast and make a C shape with your thumb and index finger opposite each other and in line with the nipple. Use your thumb and walk towards the nipple. Stop if you feel a change of texture. Now compress and release rhythmically and watch for drops to become squirts and keep going. Avoid sliding your fingers on the skin. When the flow slows down, move your fingers round and try a different section of the breast and repeat. Now move to the other breast and do the same. Do I know if my baby's feeding correctly? Okay. Well, I just have some information here that we can go through. Okay. This is a checklist um, and it tells you if breastfeeding is going well. Or... You know that feeding is going well if your baby has eight feeds or more within 24 hours, your baby is feeding between 5 and 30 minutes at each feed, your baby is having a normal skin colour, your baby is generally calm and relaxed whilst feeding and content after most feeds. When breastfeeding is comfortable. When your baby is three to four days old and beyond, you should be able to hear your baby swallowing frequently during each feed. And if your baby has wet and dirty nappies, the colour of your baby's stools should change and look mustard yellow by day five. If you decide to express your breast milk, it is important that you first sterilize your equipment thoroughly and second, that you store it well. Hello, my name is Michelle. I'm a midwife here at St. George's. During this video, I'll be giving you important information about sterilizing your feeding equipment. 
For those of you who are hoping to express your breast milk, it's very important to keep all your breast pump equipment completely clean. Ensure that you wash them thoroughly and sterilize them before use. Now, there are several ways of sterilizing your feeding equipment, three of which we will be discussing in this video. You can use a saucepan of boiling water, a steam steriliser or a microwave steriliser. However, before you start sterilising your equipment, there are two very important steps you must first do. Step 1. Preparation cleaning. First, wash your hands well with soap and water. Next, clean the work surface and then wash your hands again to remove any cleaning products. Step two, cleaning equipment. Using a brush, wash your feeding equipment and storage containers thoroughly in hot, soapy water. Scrub carefully the inside and outside of the equipment to remove fatty deposits and pay particular attention to the edges where milk can sometimes collect. Now rinse all your equipment thoroughly in clean, cold running water. Remember, you must check your feeding equipment regularly for any signs of deterioration. For example, containers may become cloudy or cracked. If you are unsure, just throw them away. You are now ready to start sterilising your feeding equipment. We are going to be going through, step by step, three different ways that this can be done. First, we are going to look at sterilising using boiling water. Place all your equipment into a large saucepan and fill it with water so that all the equipment is covered. Make sure there is no air trapped in the equipment. Cover the pan with a lid and bring it to the boiling point. Once the water starts boiling, let it boil for at least 10 minutes, making sure the pan does not boil dry. When 10 minutes is completed, turn the heat off. Keep the pan covered until the equipment is needed. Don't forget to always wash your hands before taking any sterilised equipment from the pan. Next, we are going to look at sterilising using a steam steriliser or a microwave steriliser. Remember, you must always follow the manufacturer's instructions when using any form of steriliser. This is because different brands of steriliser will have different requirements for example, the required volume of water to be added to the steriliser. You must make sure that the opening of containers and cups are always facing down so that the steam can rise and enter the equipment to sterilise it. Please ensure you wash your hands before removing equipment from the steriliser. Your equipment is now sterilised and ready for use. Please ask the midwife if you have any questions regarding this video. Once you have sterilised your feeding equipment, you can now store your express breast milk in the freezer for up to six months. If your baby prefers, you can warm the milk up to body temperature before feeding. However, you should never heat milk in the microwave as it can cause hot spots which can burn your baby's mouth. Thank you for watching our Going Home video. We hope this has been useful and informative for you and your new baby.